They did a really good job in, in, in the end of the first half and, and uh, the middle of the second half of just taking us out of our taking us out of our stuff. And uh, we, we really had a tough time uh, getting our offense going. And, and um, then there was a period at the end where we could get inside the Daniel and, and that got us going because they took everything else away. And uh, they're a good team, well coached, and a good team, and that's why it's, it's, it's a good win. Questions for the players, please. Daniel, uh, I think you did a, your team did a better job tonight of getting the ball inside to you when, when there were mismatches when you were guarded by a smaller guy. Was this like the best this year that they found you in that situation? I don't think it was a bad thing. We've been doing a great job all year. I, I mean, they just, I don't really know. I, I didn't, I didn't uh, see a mismatch really. I was just, they just gave me the ball in the right spots. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dylan, what was going through your head there when they, they tied it 50-50? You just kind of looked like you had a determined look on your face and kind of take things over and make a play. Oh, no, not at all. Um, you know, we have great guys. You know, we all play hard. You know, you know, it's never one guy taking over the game. I think that's what's so great about us. You know, we play as a team no matter, you know, if we're up or down. Uh, you know, even tie game, like you said. Um, you know, I never thought of taking over the game. I just, you know, want to do what I do um, for the team and, uh, you know, try to get the win. Can you talk about the way you were able to play defense against a team that's a pretty explosive offense? Um, you know, coach, you know, in practice always tells us defense, 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 and you know, no matter you know who we play, you know, we're gonna play the exact same way. You know, we play hard, smart, together, and you know, defense is you know what we pride ourselves on. Dylan, in the second half, you scored the majority of your points. Did you notice anything differently on the court that they were throwing at you? Oh no, not at all. Um, you know, I, like I said, you know, I just stuck to, you know, what I do every day in practice, you know, what coach teaches us. Um, but, yeah, you know, I didn't see nothing different. You know, I just, you know, played going over basketball. Dylan, do you believe that in, like, a, a momentum thing? Because it seems like after 50-50, you guys were, like, almost unstoppable on every possession. I mean, do, do you guys get something going and then it just sort of flows? Or? But yeah, definitely. You know, our momentum comes from our defense. You know, we get stops, we get rebounds. Um, you know, we can't score unless we, uh, you know, get stops. Uh, you know, our momentum comes from our defense. You know, I think that's what gets us rallied up. You know, a lot of people, you know, could get rallied up from offense, but you know, we're different. You know, we dare to be different. You know, get on defense. Dylan, how tough is the upcoming schedule for you guys? You know, games like Temple and. Uh, in Syracuse and St. John's. I mean, you guys are playing well right now, but that's a pretty tough stretch of, of games coming up. But, you know, we don't worry about, you know, the games ahead. We just worry about, you know, the games in front of us. You know, we just um, play the game against Illinois, you know, a good team. Um, and, you know, we just focus on the next game, you know. Uh, the other games are scheduled, but, you know, we we'll focus all on the next game. Anything else for the players? We're good? Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. Yeah, they can go. Okay. Okay. Coaches yeah. like to preach getting stops, getting stops, but you guys on the offensive end were pretty dominant uh, the last eight minutes or so, or most of the last eight minutes. So, what, what did you see as the reasons for that? Well, I, I thought we did get consecutive stops there. Dylan hit that three to make, they got it to 50 50, right. and uh, I think we called a timeout. And then uh, we got to stop. And then Dylan hit the three. And then after that, we got I think we got consecutive stops right in there. Came down after Dylan hit a three. He hit another shot. Then I think we went inside to Daniel, kind of spread him out. But we really hadn't been making shots. But that that was them. Like they were they were taking away all of our perimeter shooting. Uh, we had zero threes in the first half. And they just they just took away our perimeter shooting, and um, it, it was a credit to them. They did a really good job defensively. When we finally got it inside to Daniel, at good spots. Remember in the first half, he got it too far out from the basket. We we got it to him in some good spots because we were hitting shots, and, we, and they were really extended. He got it deep. Right here, coach. Jerry, I know Dylan just said he's taking one game at a time, but what can you learn, you know, from the stretch of games coming up, Syracuse, Temple, Butler. Can you learn something about your team here, and how tough is that stretch? You know what, we, I, I'm serious. We, we do it this way. I know it's boring, and uh, our guys are sick of hearing this, but we really do look at it one game at a time. We, we're gonna, uh, we got NJIT in there. Uh, I'm telling you, we're gonna, they beat Michigan. That's why 
you guys have to do that. That's your job. You have, but when you don't look at those, that's when those teams beat you when you start looking ahead. We, we have um, Temple coming up next, and uh, we'll, we'll put everything into Temple. It's, it's, it's really the way we do it. And he's, you know, when you have juniors and seniors like this, that those guys can really do that. The, the younger guys can say it, but these guys can really do it. Jake, can you talk about uh, areas of Dylan's improvement since last year? Uh, his, his basketball IQ, he's a very intelligent person. Uh, as a basketball player, he, he really enjoyed using his athleticism, his speed, his aggressiveness, and um, he didn't um, appreciate as much his basketball IQ also. And his basketball IQ is just has grown incredibly. He really picks things up really quick. He made some great decisions, and he—I I heard his answer. I mean, he knew they were extending on us. He had an open three. He hit the three. He had a wide open three. That was a great extra pass. But after that, I think he started using screens to get shots, as opposed to using screens to hit the screener or hit the post guy. And I, he figured that. It's like I got to go, and I got to hit a couple here. Jay, you guys. Do you feel like you're playing as well as you can right no, now? No. Did another I think we can get better. I really do. I really do. You know, we had 16 turnovers tonight. Um, I, there's a lot of things we can do. I, I thought um, re rebounding, 14 offensive rebounds, I think we can do a better job of that. Definitely get better defensively. Our offensive execution can get better. But, but all the teams now, you know, everybody, all the good teams will get better from here. All of them. So it's how much better can we get? Jay, I know as a coach you're happy that you guys have answered every test so far, but is there part of you that wants to see how this group responds if it gets punched? Do you want that to happen before you begin conference play? No, not really, John. I, I felt like we got punched tonight twice. I felt like in the first half they made a run at us, it gave us a good shot. And I thought when they got it to 50-50, it gave us a good shot. I thought in the Michigan game here, they gave us a great shot in the second half. I think we went down eight, if I remember. Um, they're, they're good enough shots for me. We don't have to lose. <laughs> they're, 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 they're good enough. They hurt enough. And I, and, uh, and we can learn a lot from those. If, if we would, which I, I don't know what's going to do. If you blew everybody out, you, you, you would want to. But we've been down in games. So this Bucknell game, you know, we, we, we were in the last possession game. So we had enough. We had enough shots. Jake, how much better is, is Daniel now when you do get it inside him in those spots that he makes the other team pay? It's, it's just... I mean, that was big. If we didn't get that tonight, we don't win the game. Because we, they, they were an outstanding perimeter defensive team. Outstanding. And we just, we, we couldn't, we, saw, we had zero threes at halftime. You know, Dylan hit Dylan hit one there, but they they were about to shut that down. He hit another one after that. The next time he had to drive the ball around foul because they took, then they took him out of it. Then we started going into Daniel. That, that's, that's a major impact for our team. Uh, Javon has always given that to us, but Daniel's given us a second a second uh, option there, which is really valuable. Jay, three games in New York, three wins, and obviously you're unbeaten, so it's kind of hard to say like you know, that any of the other games were down games. But do you think that this sort of veteran-laden team embraces a big stage opportunity? Uh, definitely. Um, they, they also they they love you know like me. They know I love coming to New York. They they love it. You know they're they're East Coast basketball guys. Dylan Ennis from Toronto, like he knows the whole New York City basketball. They love it. So that's big to them. But I think what's important is that the juniors and seniors understand as much as you love it, you can't get caught up in that. you got to come there and perform. That's what juniors and seniors do. And I think those guys really, that's where the maturity comes in. They don't get caught up in the hype of being here. They just get excited about the challenge of being here. All right, we have two more here and here. Jay, Dylan talks about playing Villanova basketball, and you have guys, there's four guys that can hit at least 10 points a game for you. How much easier does it make it as a coach that this team is more unselfish and that you can spread the offense around with those guys? Yeah, this t this team, you know, we, we've had a couple other teams like this where you, you go into a game and you don't worry. Like, like Javon struggled tonight, you know. Sometimes when he comes to the guard, he just gets worked up, man. He, just, he loves being back in New York. And you got then Javon, I mean, uh, Daniel comes and does that arch – you know, you saw Art shoot that foul shot. He can't even shoot. He tells me he's fine. He's not. And um, and then Dylan goes off. You know, it's it's really, as a coach, it's you, you, you really feel fortunate to have a lot of weapons like that and, and guys that will accept that from each other. Okay, the last question right here. Uh, Jay, 
Daniel's ceiling as a player, uh, with what you've seen so far in these few games, he's been terrific, obviously, so improved, but how much more room does he have to grow from your perspective? He, he can get a lot better. He, he's, yeah, yeah he, he can be um, he can be a face-up jump shooter. He's actually a pretty good jump shooter. We don't really need him to do it. Um, he's a great passer. Uh, you saw the drive he made. We caught it with a baseline off one foot and dunked it. Like, he can make plays off of that. He's an outstanding defensive player. Um, you saw him guard Starks a couple times. And, he, he can he can get a lot better. He really can. Okay. Thank you guys. Thanks, Jim.